Hello, and welcome to Moments with the Master. I'm Freakin' White here with Father Josh to discuss the readings for the last three weeks, uh, one of which we are currently on and the last two which we are behind on. So it's for Pentecost Sunday, Holy Trinity Sunday, and the um, Feast of Corpus Christi. All right. So... <clears throat> First time I heard that, I was like, why are we celebrating a city in Texas? For uh, Pentecost, the lessons are um, Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 11, story of Pentecost. Uh, Psalm 104, 1 Corinthians 12, 1 through 13. That's about the spiritual gifts and the one body of Christ, which is interesting. Well, I'll get to that in a second. Uh, and then the gospel is John chapter 20, verses 19 through 23 which is when uh, Jesus appears to them and, and gives them the Holy Spirit temporarily. Then Holy Trinity, uh, you've got Exodus chapter 34, verses 4 through 9. It is the giving of the law. Um, because the, of Shavuot. Yes. Uh, the Song of the Three. Speaking of the Song of the Three, I've been listening to um, Lord of the Rings as read by Andy Serkis, the guy who did the voice for Gollum. Very good. Um, sure. So, towards the end of book two, uh, at the right after the Shelob's lair, there's an orc in there named Shagrat. And every time he would mention him in my head, I heard Shagrat <laughs> Meshach in a video. <laughs> and I kept imagining the mm. icon of the three holy youths, but one of them was a was an orc. Um, <clears throat> Nice. Anyway, Song of the Three Young Men. Um, the epistle is Second Corinthians chapter thirteen, verses eleven through fourteen. And the gospel is John chapter thirteen. I'm sorry, John chapter three, verses sixteen through eighteen. God so loved the world. Um, then Corpus Christi, Old Testament reading is Deuteronomy chapter eight, with various verses. Um, Jesus, uh, not Jesus, Moses telling everybody to remember the law and the Lord. Uh, Psalm chapter 147. The epistle is 1 Corinthians 10, chapter 16 through 17, the cup of blessing which we bless. Um, and There's then a John the gospel, Michael Talbot song about that, isn't there? There oh, is. Oh. Cup of blessing which we bless. Uh, what is, no, is it John Michael Talbot or is it the... Um, St. Louis Jesuits, one bread, one body, one Lord. You know what? I don't know, but we sang that in the Mass when I was in Kuwait. Um, it's, it's, it's a pretty common one in Catholic churches. To be um, Yep. Uh, and then John chapter 6, verses 51 through 58, which you spoke about where Jesus is saying he is the living bread. Okay. So I wanted to mention... Uh, okay, first of all, there, there's a connection between the epistles in Pentecost and the uh, the epistle, uh, uh, I mean, and for Corpus Christi. So for Corpus Christi, you hear, because there is one bread, we who are one body, uh, we who are many are one body, for we all partake of the one bread, Corinthians 10. Yeah, which is actually two chapters before the Pentecost epistle. Uh, and God gives, you know, gifts to various people within the body. But this is the thing. Uh, first of all, in the Pentecost readings, one of the things that you see is that the gifts that are given are for the edification of the church and not just for one person. Right. We have twisted um, it greatly into making spiritual gifts about me, 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 especially yep. the sign gifts. And one of, one of the interesting things is in the gospel, when Jesus breathes on the apostles and he says, as the father has sent me, so send I you. And then he breathes on them and he says, receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. Their, their gift of the Holy Spirit was directly tied to their office, to their job as apostles, not just for the preaching of the gospel, but for uh the forgiveness of sins there he is very much giving them the role his role on earth yes so here's an interesting question because he does that in the absence of thomas and he does not do it mm. with thomas when thomas comes a week later 
I doubt that he was worried about it. <laughs> Good on. Right. Um, the Holy Trinity did readings he, are great. Did uh, he miss it? Did he miss? Nice. <laughs> Well done. Thank you. you. You took it up a next step. All right. <laughs> um, the readings for the Trinity really highlight like you know, the it's sad that Trinity. nobody's going to hear that. Nobody listens. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> Did you miss it? Uh, it should go on uh, um, the Catholic uh, Skyrim thing. <laughs> Did, uh, oh, I'll have to think about that. That could be constructed pretty well. Um, all right. So here's what I wanted to talk about, though. Starting especially with the Trinity, because really kind of all of this is acting on um, the reality of the Trinity. Um, you had said that it was the central tenet of Christianity, and I agree with that. Um, so what is the main lesson that we get that God is not one, but neither many. You're meant to be in community. This relationship. And and that Jesus, even before his incarnation, um, evidences like the way to live in a community of equals. And one of the ways that you do that mm. is submission one to another. Uh, the Holy Spirit though equal with the father and the son seriously murdoch you're hurting me ouch stop all right i'll keep talking while i go give him something to distract him the holy spirit while equal with the father and the son proceeds from the father and for lack of a better term i will say allows himself to be um sent by the son uh to to the world and waits the submission yes and it's Jesus, it's very much like, like what we do sorry it's very much like we, we do in the military i mean the people that outrank me um are not better than me i choose i make a conscious decision to obey their orders and jesus very much not only submits to the Father vocally and repeatedly, um, but also to his mother whom he created and the Baptist that he came to save and the disciples that he came to teach. Continue I, this after uh, after the ascension where I said, you know, we needed to talk about Jesus enthroned. I'm back on this message. And I'll tell you why I'm back on it this week. <clears throat> Um, a lot of people, Rochelle actually randomly started watching this too and said that it reminded her of our family, um, that shiny, happy people documentary, which is the Duggars. about the Duggar family, but more than that is about, and I did not know that they were so influenced by this, but am shocked, not at all, um, oh, how uh, influenced they were by the life principles Institute Gothard. of Bill Gothard which we both went to. Um, yep. What did you think about it? Did, did you, how much, of, how much did that affect you? Like, did I, you ever believe in that book that we had to do? Do you remember that book? Yep, I do. Um, I would love to get my hands on a copy of it. I know me too, if just yes. to laugh at it, but I bet it would be more disturbing than funny at this point. Yeah, I desperately wanted to, I wanted my parents' approval so badly, oh, and and so I I did things that I don't know. I mean, I don't know that I disagreed. I don't know that I knew any better. It was, I mean, it, it was early days for us and them. Quite frankly, I mean, I don't blame my I parents was. for. Uh, it was a mid eighties or later. I can't. I can't remember. I was how old fifteen, they were. so it would have been eighty seven. Okay. Um. But I like the I, I just there's a couple the 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 courting thing, no kissing before marriage. There's there is some value to that. It's it's the way they present it is 
really wrong, but the, the core principle I don't think is wrong. Um, as opposed to the way we do it often What's today. The core principle? Huh? What would you say the core principle is? Well, to save yourself until marriage for your spouse. And so what so I now that that so that seemed to be the main takeaway for me right. as well. But it's interesting that that's not everybody's main takeaway. Right. So I taught my own kids like, you know, I didn't teach them the courting thing. What, but what I said was, look, there I can count on one hand the number of people I know who met in high school and got married. And I can tell you hundreds and hundreds of stories of terrible heartbreak amongst 13, 14, 15 year olds. It's just unnecessary. And I was like, so here's the thing. Have have friendships with people of the opposite sex. And when you're ready to be married, then start, know what your deal breakers are, and then start really seeking that out. Um, so that's what they did. And um, good for them. But the the other thing that really I that really just stuck with me was that rock music thing. And you're frozen. Well, nuts. I'm going to keep talking because maybe he'll come back. But it was this rock music thing. Oh, there you are. Um, it was this rock music thing that, like anything with a beat, is of the devil. Are you hearing me? Okay. Anything with a beat is of the devil. And so... Um, and, and it doesn't matter what the words are. And so we were in that for a while. Like I really, I was, I was in that camp until I wasn't. So. We had been really before Gothard. I can't blame him for that. The interesting thing for me is that for the girls, for our sisters, and I wonder if it, this was the case for most women, the two big takeaways were, virginity until marriage and if not it's your fault and you're a dirty hoe <laughs> and you are to go from the authority of your father directly to the authority of your husband and that authority is complete and if you right. step out of that authority then you are basically under satan um but you cannot be you cannot be directly under the authority of god is is what the takeaway was there right. were umbrellas of authority and there was no situation where you could directly be under god's authority um Listen. and in in discussions that we have had with our father the the there seems to be i mean he's kind of coming around but but we were raised we were raised with that idea that you know the 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 man's place is in the authority. The woman's just supposed to be a helper, which you could speak to in a moment. That um, the woman, like that verse where it says, "Your desire shall be for your husband." You and I both heard. Oh, yes, this I was taught. But that uh, the desire for your husband is the desire for your husband's position to usurp his authority. Yes, which is reiterated in uh, the New Testament, but. Mm -hmm. It is, this is what kills me, exactly how, even, even, even on a plain reading of scripture, exactly how unbiblical all of that is. The Proverbs 31 wife is not a submissive wife. She's not an authoritative wife either, but she's a powerful woman who runs the house, who makes financial decisions. She's doing everything. And it seems like all the husband does is he's free to go discuss matters of the city at the, you know, door of the city with the other men. Um, there's, there are verses that talk about the wife submitting to the husband. There are also verses where it talks about the husband and wife and Paul submitting to each other, um, which are always skipped. <laughs> but more than that, even if we just stick with those ones, when we look at, if we are correct, the core um, concept of Christianity, it is three equal persons who submit seemingly to each other 
uh, just for the sake of out of love to where you can't really tell who the boss is. And once again, if the husband is in the role of Jesus, there should be no way to tell when exactly it is that he is asserting his authority. Mm -hmm. Um, And we talked, I've talked about this before about daddy, even though he spoke those words, those Bill Gothard words, he he did not, he didn't live it. Thank God for that. He didn't live it. He actually lived biblical Christ centered Christianity. In fact, I'm Um, not sure his marriage would have survived had he tried to impose that kind of thing in our household. Absolutely not. Um, not, not only that, but that the thing that I wrote about before said our, the core, the, the central theme was our relationship with our mother was built on his self humiliation, right. his self like abasement. The guy, he's like the guy at, on D-Day, which we just celebrated, but the guy on D-Day who throws himself on the concertina wire so that others can walk across him to get into the battle. Exactly. Uh, and I don't even, he wasn't even aware of what he was doing. I don't even, I mean, he wasn't even like technically obeying anything biblical at that point, even though like not not cognizantly but but for whatever reason because he certainly had you know it's an interesting thing um well whatever he did that and we saw that and i at least i i he brought he likely caused issues by preaching the bill gothard message Mm -hmm. but I at least am grateful for him not following his own teaching. Right. The fact that he. um, Well, what? Yeah. What I told him the other day, because he was talking to me about it, was like you, you, you only knew what you knew at the time. Like he changed over time. But he was. I mean they had only been really following Jesus for just a handful of years and, and got, and that is true. We have this issue. Now I have this issue now to find a church that is socially just, but also really believes in the Bible. It's difficult. It either seems to be uh, Unitarian to the point where, you know, what's the point of even going to a church or conservative to the point of, I, I just, I can't take it. Mm-hmm. I cannot take it. But if you, if you think that all of these people are following scripture, it's difficult not to be sucked into their um, messages, right. at least temporarily. Yes. You were, I interrupted you, by the way. No, I, you basically said what I was going to say. Um, oh, one last thing. Mm-hmm. Um, Paul, he does get crapped on a lot for saying the marriage thing and and like seemingly supporting slavery. There are verses that slave owners use, but one of the things it, one of the things about Paul is not only was he born into a certain environment, and not only did he have more important things he thought to think about than women's rights or slave rights or whatever. But what he preached to people, if truly followed, would have completely upended societal norms. Not only would have, did. Yeah, did. If you truly followed the teachings of teachings of Christ changed the Roman Empire. Yeah. Not not totally and completely, but largely. Yeah, I, I I talk about this a lot when people praise Western culture. Western culture without Christianity, like every other culture without Christianity, is morally bankrupt. Um, it, it is Achilles. Yeah, it is. It is Nietzsche. It is hell. It's the um, Third Reich. Yeah, it was Hitler. Um, so 
that um, truly following not not even just Jesus, but but Paul's teachings. If you if we were to follow his teachings about slavery, you could not own a slave. Yeah, because you're supposed to be thinking of them as Jesus, as your brother, brothers. Yes, and exactly. And, and if you follow the teaching well. as uh, uh, for husbands and wives and you are the person that's supposed to be in the role of Jesus, you have the greater job because you were the one who was meant to obey, abase themselves more. I, I think of it in, I mean, I, I think of it in relation to like toilet seats. <laughs> um, well, I, I have to stand up and pee and I'm the man, so I'm going to put the lid up. But, but in my mind, I saw this video once and it was like a guy and he um, had a bucket set out and he had his wife holding a hose in between her legs and he was trying to show her how difficult it was to aim. And in my mind, I was thinking, well, first of all, if you can't aim, then just sit down to pee. Yeah. Yeah. And secondly, that's not the thing. What should be happening here is that the man lowers the seat, wipes it down and puts a fucking men on it. Pardon my French put some mint on it and spray some air freshener just in case his wife happens to come in after him or his daughters. But somehow that shows weakness. The mint, it's supposed to be something to, you know, chew on while you're taking a crap or whatever it is that you're doing in there. You put it on the top of the toilet seat. Okay. Um, and not, not the toilet seat, the, uh, the, the back of the toilet. Okay. You get my point. <laughs> put a flower in there. Um, a little anyway. blossom floating in the bowl. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that is exactly right. Uh, you get it. Um, and until you are willing to be that, you don't get to be a leader because that's how you do it. I had this conversation, this is months ago, with somebody and they, their wife called me and then they, it was this whole thing anyway, but I'm sitting there talking to this person and, and they were telling me about, you know, oh gosh, what, what did they had done? I can't remember what was going on, but their wife, they, their wife wasn't being physically intimate and I have needs and he was going on and I'm just, I'm sitting there listening to this guy and I'm like, I really want to slap you because you are one of the most, it, and, and he just, he went on, I finally stopped him and I was like, you know what? You can live your entire life without having sex. That is not what your marriage is about. Um, he didn't like that. <laughs> he didn't. Anyway, that's it. Anything else on your end? I No, no, it's, I, I think it's, we, You know what did what did Jesus say? You can serve God or money, Mammon. I, 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 you can serve God or, and I think maybe it's not, or maybe money represents power. But that really seems to be what the the dichotomy is. I either try to hold power over others, or I serve. Genesis. Yep. Yeah. And and. Paul is very clear on what the mind of Christ is. Yeah. We but did not boy, consider it. We don't like that in America, do we? Oh, Lord, no. America. Um, yeah. Funny. I'm sorry. Uh, in the name one of the last Father. Funny thing. Oh, sorry. And then I'll oh, go ahead. Last right, funny right. thing. Yeah, one last funny thing. So when I was doing, it was called ILE, right? So the, the thing that I had to do to promote the lieutenant colonel, and one of the things I had to do was write like there was this scenario and this thing going on with another country and how are you going to respond? And so I had to come up with three courses of action because that's what we do in the military. And so one of them was, um, and I had to name them, right? So I had, you know, one was diplomacy and one was something else. And then the other one was just go all out, just go blow them to pieces. And I was like, I was talking to Mikey and I was like, what do I, I have to come up with a name for this? What am I going? He's like, you should call it America them. <laughs> and so that's what I named it. Um, and the guy that graded it sent me a thing back. He was just laughing. He was like, that was amazing. So anyway, 
Now let's pray. Don't mark them. Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, I give you my heart, my soul, and my strength. Make me a good man.